The Polaroid Snap Touch is an instant camera that tries to be both retro and modern. The problem is it fails at being modern and it fails at being retro too. Now I'm a fan of instant cameras, I have a few. Unfortunately, the Snap Touch was a very poor addition to my collection, especially in comparison to the others, even my broken Instax. But before all that, join me, if you will, for a brief trip down Polaroid memory lane. On November 26, 1948, the first ever Polaroid LAN camera was sold for just under 90 bucks in Boston. The idea for this revolutionary camera was conceived by Edwin LAN much earlier in 1943, allegedly while on vacation when his daughter asked why she couldn't see the picture he had just taken. By 1956, Polaroid had officially sold 1 million cameras. Maybe that's just a flowery corporate origin story, but the fact remains, Polaroid instant cameras revolutionized photography. Unfortunately for them, Polaroid's relevance simply fell off in the early 2000s. The cameras I used to see quite frequently when I was a kid died out in favor of the emerging digital trends. And while people still used film, and they obviously still do, the effects of digital were felt all around. Polaroid attempted to stay relevant in 2008 with the Pogo mobile printer using zinc or zero ink paper to make prints on the go. They released a few other mobile printers and even a few instant cameras. The Instagram age really helped bolster the desire to take nostalgic instant style photos. Fast forward to January 2015 to the release of the Polaroid Snap Touch, a sleek looking instant camera for the modern photographer. Fully equipped with 13 megapixels built in flash, touchscreen, and zinc printer, the camera sounded promising enough. I was pretty excited to get my hands on one. And then I did. The manual controls are nice, however the touchscreen is certainly finicky and far less responsive than I'd like it to be. But the epitome of my complaints with this camera is the fact that it freezes up on me fairly regularly. On New Year's Eve I shot four photos of my friends. I queued up the four photos to print, and wouldn't you know the menu just froze up. Considering you can't just remove the batteries from the unit, I literally had to wait until the camera died to be able to shut it off. Of course, I couldn't recreate any of that for this review. The form factor isn't great either. Once you get over the new shininess of the camera, you realize how poorly designed it actually is. Well, other than this cool magnetic lens cap, that's pretty badass actually. The on-off button is also a pop-up flash. The slightest bump will pop the flash and turn the thing on. I can't tell you how many times I left it in my camera bag only to find that it was dead because it was popped open and on all day. The shutter button feels flimsy and you just don't get that same satisfaction that you do from the older cameras. The print quality is fairly low in my opinion, mainly because the camera tends to fall apart in many lighting situations. Anything outside of a bright and sunny day will give you some messed up colors. Darks tend to be on the blue side, lights more on the pink and magenta. On top of the overall quality, these prints seem like they really can't stand the test of time. I put them on my desk and after a few weeks the color began to degrade even further, and all the prints started bending. Not a great look, Polaroid. And while this might be a silly thing to complain about, the printer is just noisy. I mean, listen to the sound. Lovely. Prints come out slowly, and ultimately I believe operating the camera during a print is what causes the thing to lock up. So when this is printing, I kinda just let it do its thing. I should say I'm also not going for a meme here. This is how long it takes the camera to print something. Apart from all the technical shortcomings this camera has, loading the paper is a little annoying too. You see, each pack of paper comes with a special smart sheet. This is meant to calibrate the camera for printing, and you have to do it every time you load in new paper. If you put the thing in upside down, it has to scan the whole page only for it to tell you that it was wrong. Let's compare that to loading a new pack of film into the Fujifilm Instax. And of course we have to talk about the way this camera focuses. You guessed it, slowly. And oftentimes, if you're too close to an object, the shot will be completely out of focus. Where this camera falls short in the retro department is a little more conceptual. Obviously the buttons, the techie stuff will completely remove you from that sense of nostalgia, but going deeper than that, 
the fact that you can pop a micro SD card in removes the fun of shooting instant in the first place. When you shoot, let's say on the streets, with an instant camera, the fact that you have a finite number of shots is the fun and challenging part of the experience. It makes you think about the photo you're about to take, it makes you conserve your shots, and usually will make you take more thoughtful photos. I'm not saying it's a rule that there'll be better photos, but you'll undoubtedly think about them more. With the addition of an SD card slot, there's nothing stopping you from taking hundreds of shots and just printing the one you like. And while there's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion, it simply isn't what instant film is about. To be frank, the only thing that's genuinely retro about this camera is the rainbow design on the front, homaging the LAN cameras of old. So who would I recommend this camera to? Well, no one really. At close to 200 bucks, you'd be much better off going with a Fujifilm Instax. Their prints are much nicer, and the cameras give you that feeling of nostalgia. And for less than half the price of the Snap Touch, it's really a no-brainer, isn't it? While Polaroid may have missed the mark on this camera, it's encouraging to see the largest shareholder of the Impossible Project acquired Polaroid. For those of you who don't know, the Impossible Project is a group who still manufactures film stock for the older Polaroid cameras. They also build their own instant cameras. Perhaps with this new acquisition, Impossible will put out a camera that will reinvent instant photography for the digital age. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Since I got into the editing process of this video, both Polaroid and Impossible's websites have updated calling out some information being dropped on September 13th. I guess we'll have to stay tuned and find out what's coming. Thanks for tuning in guys, this is Sweet Lou Photography.